Hello, America. I'm Tom Hand, the creator of Americana Corner. And welcome to our next segment of Preserving America, where we spotlight early American history organizations that are focused on telling the great American story about our nation's first century. We think you will be as impressed as we are when you learn how our fellow citizens are keeping alive our heroes of yesterday. Today, we are with the fine folks at the Kanoka Cheek Institute in Mercersburg, Pennsylvania, one of our Americana Corner grant recipients. And joining us is Matthew Wedd, this executive director. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Oh, great to see you. Uh, before we get too deep into the questions, help us understand how to pronounce Kanoka Cheek. Uh, in the Iroquois tongue, it is with more K, it's Kanakaji. Uh, in the 1820s, a German Moravian spelt it, and he was German, so he spelt it Kunukaji. Um, in the 18th century, it's both spelled and said hundreds of different ways in documents, which makes it hard to track. Okay. Um, in the local area today, though, it's called Kanakaji. So I mispronounce it, Kanakaji. Kanakaji, yes. For those of our viewers who are not familiar with Kanaka Jig, can you tell us a little bit about your mission? Absolutely. So in short, we're a hands-on regional learning center. Our mission is to interpret, preserve, and educate on the cultural and natural resources of the Appalachian frontier. The reason is the entire area we're in, in the early 18th century, was referred to as the Kanaka Jig settlement, the Kanaka Jig Valley. Today, it spans several states and several counties and hundreds and hundreds of miles. Where we are specifically located just outside Mercersburg, Pennsylvania, we have the Appalachian Tuscarora Mountains bordering us. And in the 1730s, that was the edge of civilization, the frontier, the definition of it. Mm -hmm. And it was a settlement for the Davis family, very early settlers, very early in America's history. At a college institute, we interpret the frontier period, which does mean our interpretation tends to stop in terms of education after the American Revolution. Because of course, after the American Revolution, the frontier moves on with the new Western boundaries expanding beyond the mountains. Very good, thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your series, Bringing Colonial History to Life. I was on your website and it looks like a great series. It looks like it's a lot of hands-on stuff. Can you talk to us about that? It is. So at the Carnegie Institute at Rock Hill Farm, which is the historic name of it, there were no famous people living there. There were no battles fought there. And of course, many historic sites have those big, big events. What we have is the ability to preserve how people lived, the type of homes they lived in, the clothing, of course, I am dressed in a case of clothing right now, the food they ate, the gardening techniques to crafts. And so our bringing clothing history to life is exactly that focusing on the small stories. How do people buckle their shoes? How do they start a fire with flint and steel? And bring it to life, not just for ourselves, but for the visitor. We're very much a hands-on immersion experience. So if we are sowing turnip seeds, a visitor is gonna get dirty and sow turnip seeds. If we're building a fire in our bake oven so we can make gingerbread, it'll be the visitor who is striking flint against steel and needing the dough. I was going to ask you, about your session on styling in the 18th century. What's all that? Are you styling right now? What you uh, I am always styling. Okay, um, well, good man, good man. So yeah, so again, it's all about helping the visitor, be it a young child or an adult or a grandparent, step into history. So I could talk to you for hours about the buttons on 18th century waistcoats, the uh, how to make a cocked hat, I made it for myself. Oh yeah. But what's much better is if you can try it on yourself. So we have a plethora of extra clothing for volunteers and visitors. And during this styling 18th century program, we'll explain the fashions 18th century by dressing you, the visitor. Uh, and that makes of course for a memorable selfie, which then goes home and then word spreads about American culture. One of our big things is everyone has a hook that's gonna make them love history. Maybe mm -hmm. they love modern fashion and learning about the cuffs on coats is gonna make them wanna study history. Maybe they're an epicure of the kitchen 
and learning how food is made is going to make them love American history. So find that hook and you'll bring everyone to history because everything's connected. Well, thank you, Matthew. Uh, can you tell us how the grant you receive from Amer Americana Corner is helping you with your mission? Absolutely. So as a small nonprofit, donations and grants are our lifeblood. Our education programs don't bring in money to keep the lights on. Uh, we offer them to teach the community. Our free historic programs are free. Uh, so our grants uh, from yourself uh, and our donations from others allow it to happen. More particularly though, it's allowed us to expand. Um, so rather than just having schools come to us with funding from your Americana Corner, we offer to take our programs to the schools. Um, so I went to Greencastle Central Middle School and did a medical program for 400 children. Oh, wow. um, and then it was so popular that afterwards they said, can you do a program about American soldiers? They were studying the revolution. So it's not usually in our wheelhouse because we do civilian life, but because of your grant funding, I developed a program called Soldier, Soldier, the American Revolutionary Soldier. And we provided it gratis to them, thanks to you. And the program was side by side, the British soldier, the American soldier, using primary sources to discuss what they dress, what they eat, how they fought. Um, and you'll find out that the average soldier's life wasn't too different. It was all wondering where the next meal is coming from. <laughs> um, and to end the program, uh, we did a drill session uh, using HSM drill manuals with the kids outside of the school. And again, we did that for 200 students for this one. And uh, yes, uh, it made quite the ruckus. Matthew, I have to tell you, that really makes me feel great. That's what this is all about, trying to, trying to get some money out to the boots on the ground that can go and have access to these schools and the kids and so forth. I think we can keep the American spirit alive if we can get in front of the students, but that takes funding. And so what you're doing is really perfect for us. And I hope you keep us in mind next year for the 2023 grant program, which I believe we will be opening up uh, in mid-November. And so please keep us in mind. I'm sure there's something we can help you with next year. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I, I see we're out of time, uh, Matthew. I think you and I could go on all day long and not be bored. But our, anyway, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us and informing us and all our fellow Americans about the great things that are going on at the Kanoka Jig Institute. I hope I got, did I get that right? Kanaka Jig, the Kanaka Jig Institute in Mercersburg. Uh, for everyone else, please continue to follow us on AmericanaCorner.com where you can keep up with all of our projects that we're supporting. And thank you for listening. And until next time, may your love of country lead you.